kind of looking at, at you as a, an elite marathon runner, you know, the, the ketone IQ, um, these just ketones are very big in the ultra running space. I just had Jeff Browning on the other day, who I know he's a big advocate for it. I've had Zach Bitter on. He's talked about his use of, of taking in ketones and just lots of, obviously like you guys, I think, what did I see? Like 50 or 60% of the entire tour de France is, is now like utilizing ketone IQ, which is amazing for you as a marathon runner. So not this, you know, hours and hours and hours of being out there more. So you're trying to go fast in like a, you know, two and a half, three hour time frame, right? Like how, how is it differently utilized for like people trying to go, you know, PR like a, a half marathon or a marathon, for example, versus somebody doing like ultra endurance and, and, you know, multi-hour events. Where it really starts to matter, where just, just general metabolic, flexibility starts to kick in is around that one hour mark where you have these different fueling systems in your body, right? You have your, your carbohydrate fueling system, and then you have your fat and ketone fueling system, your carbohydrate fueling system. You can think about it. Like if people, if this analogy makes sense, like Ram versus your hard drive, where like your, your Ram is very quick to access very, very fast access versus a hard drive, especially like before we had solid state hard drives, you had to like spin a disc, the little needle has to go to the right spot in the disc. It's slower. But why do you have both? It's like, well, your Ram, if you look at your computer, it's like your Ram will have like 64 gigabytes of, of, uh, Ram. And then it'll have like a terabyte of hard drive because Ram is super expensive. Like, it, like the, mm -hmm. if you wanted a, if you want a large volume, um, you got to have a hard drive. If you want something quick, you have RAM. So you have like, like a small inside of your body's fuel sources. You have a small amount of carbs, which you can draw upon really quickly and which help you to do really quick things, high intense activities. And then you have a ton more of fat that you can use directly sometimes. And you can also turn that fat into ketones and it's a slower process. It's slower to pull on that fat. It's slower to convert that into usable energy, but you have a lot more of it. And so if you're going to do something like run a mile or run an 800 or run a 10 K even those, that's so high intensity that you're mainly going to be using glycogen carbohydrates, using these terms interchangeably, you're mainly going to be using your carbohydrate system for high intensity efforts that are under an hour. Once you start going longer than that, like you can't hold 10 K intensity for three hours. Like you, you can't, um, over these longer periods, your, your intensity level drops. And when your intensity level drops and you're prolonging the total duration of the exercise, that starts being where your fat and ketone system will kick in. So a lot of what people do, so marathon is an interesting distance. Even a half marathon is because it's like at just over that crossover point where, uh, fuel selection starts to really matter that what you'll do, what a lot of marathon runners will do is they'll intentionally go on a fasted run at least one or two days a week. It's not going to be usually your hardest run, but you'll do a zone two run in a fasted state. So that you're training your body to be able to use fat and ketones and to be able to, you literally develop more of the enzymes to break that down. And then also to be able to metabolize that into usable energy. So you're getting that more metabolic flexibility. Like any time you're running in general as a distance runner, you're getting some degree of metabolic flexibility. Your body's getting better at drawing on fat and putting it to use. And if you, and especially if you, the trade-off with training with carbs. So here's when I will train with carbs is if I'm going to do a track session where I'm doing like 12 by 400s, or if I'm doing a threshold run where I really want to like, like I want my legs to be moving fast. I really, it's important. My legs are moving fast today. I will have carbohydrates before that. If it's a like long run where there's not speed work involved in it, to me, that long run, the main goal of that long run is to be able to have stamina, to be able to have metabolic flexibility for the latter miles in a marathon. So more likely than not for that long run, I will do it fasted or at least like will not have carbs beforehand. And I'll do that so that my body is like forced to draw upon fat, getting faster at that metabolic flexibility. And then you start, when you start stacking this together, it's really interesting, right? Because 
if you do a proper marathon build where you've done some speed work, so your legs are like fast and strong and they know the movement patterns and moving quickly. And then you've done some longer zone two work where you really let your body exercise in a fat burning zone. If you stack this all together and you've done this repeatedly for weeks and weeks, then you show up on race day, you have a nice you know taper for a week or two. You show up on race day and your body's able to move efficiently at high speed and it's able to draw upon your fat and ketone system in order to fuel yourself for a long run and combine on that. Like it's all like, I would also recommend carb loading the you know 48 hours before your race so that you have carbs. And then as those carbs deplete during your race, your body also has that metabolic flexibility to be able to draw upon fat and ketones. And this just becomes more, more important for these longer events, because if you're doing a hundred mile race, it's like, okay, you, you can't change the fact that your body really can only store so much carbohydrates. You have this tiny Ram chip, this tiny small amount of carbohydrates compared to the hard drive, large capacity of fat and ketones. So if you're doing an, an event that's 20 hours, you're going to run out of carbohydrates really quickly. You can only eat and digest so much. That's another key factor is that like, even if you're slamming a goo every 20 minutes, eventually you just get backed up. Like eventually you're, you cannot digest fast enough to keep up with your energy expenditure. Like you're mm. burning faster than you can possibly throw more coal onto the fire. So you can try, right? Like you sh certainly should, like if you're doing any kind of race, like I always say, just eat as much as you possibly can without barfing, like without like any driving, any performance drawbacks, like eat as much goo. If you can eat a goo every half hour, cool. If you can have one every 15 minutes, cool. Like no, no matter how fast you do it, you're not going to be able to keep up. So go as fast as you can obviously practice this, but eat as much as you can without leading to any kind of GI distress without barfing or crapping your pants and like max out what you're eating period. And then no matter what you do there, there's going to be some Delta where you are not able to completely fuel your body's energy demands. And then in order to make up for that difference, you're going to be pulling on either like the stored carbohydrates from your carb loading for, for, you know, pasta dinner the night before, and, or you're going to be pulling from your fat and ketone store. And that's where, that's where you're seeing like a lot of, yeah, the Jeff Brownings of the world are getting really keen or have been, I mean, Jeff's been doing it for a long time. Like we've been, we've been uh, training notes for like five plus years at this point on um, just like being really smart about how he's training, really developing that metabolic flexibility, using carbs selectively, like using it in a way that like is complementary to a metabolic flexibility that he's already built where he could go without carbs, but he then adds carbs like on top is kind of like a nitro, like afterburner. So he's able to really perform on race day, but he could, you, like, I, I just knowing Jeff, like he could probably fast for a full day and then do a hundred miler because he's so metabolically flexible.